Hello and welcome to Spry Whimsy Fiber Arts. Today I'm going to continue my two-part video on pre-felts as well as show you how to make a vessel using a resist. Let's start by showing you the different materials I'll be using today. All right, so for materials today, we'll be using, first I have my work surface here, the, polar, the solar pool cover, um, which is an excellent work surface because it's just first a good wet surface to work on and it gives that little extra agitation. I have the pre-felt that I made in a previous video uh, here that I will be cutting using my rotary cutter into some slices. I have my template that I'm using as my resist. Um, it's fairly large. I am going for a fairly large vessel here. And I have my soapy water and my ball sprinklers. I also have a piece of sidewalk chalk. And merino wool roving is what I'll be using today in a variety of colors. These will be my outside colors. And I'll have some other colors that will come along for the inside of the vessel. So let's get started. Here you can see my uh, pre-felts uh, cut. Uh, I cut away some pieces. All most of these just fit together. That's what they came. I just cut away the excess. But most of these just fit together. So you can see what I started with. This is my resist that I'm working with. So these need to be in what I'm working on close to the length of this. Um, so they are fairly large pieces. Um, so that's the pre-felt cut section. So that was using the rotary mat, rotary cutter. Um, just make sure when you're using these, please keep your other hand far away. So this is just me with one hand doing it. The other hand was nowhere near the work surface. And we'll move on. All right, my next step is working with my template, which is also going to be my resist in the middle. I'm going to use my sidewalk chalk and mark out my outer edge of it. All the way around. So that gives me my work surface that I'm going to be working within. Now, because I'm working with a pre-felt, I need to start by laying out some of those pre-felts. So what I'm going to be doing is, well, let's see if we can see it on here. Here's a, something I had made in the past, a vessel with pre-felts on it with the sort of flaming up the vessel. That's what we're working towards, something similar to that, but kind of reversing in the colors. So... Start with a couple pieces of the pre-felt, working within the size, well this one's big enough to go right down the middle. I'm going to take off just a little bit at the bottom. What's down here, this would be the bottom of my the vessel, is going to be on the underside of the vessel, sort of the base of the vessel, so that can stop there. I'm going to grab a couple smaller pieces. There, and up through here. Now this one I'm going to shorten a bit. Now, because I am starting with the bottom, I need to turn these over. So this is the side I want visible, what you're seeing now, but I have to do this to it to make them visible in the end. I'm going to try to bend this a little bit, follow the curve of the vessel a little. This one I think I want to narrow down just a bit so I can pull it down in here. All right, so those are sort of set in place. To help me truly set them, I'm just going to wet these now, just directly watering right on top of them and get them to sit still. Now, I'm going to start with my first set of colors. So, this 
pattern, I'm going to be sort of a blending it up, uh, sort of fading the color from the green to the yellow to the orange to the red at the top on this vessel. But the bottom, I'm going to do a little curve here. Fiber direction matters, and this is going to help me wrap this vessel a little better and shape it a little better by curving here at the bottom with my fibers. Now these are just going to flow up from here. And now you'll notice that I'm putting the fuzzy edge of my fibers up. That is going to help me do a transition into the next color. All right, that was the green. Now it won't be as clean a transition in what we're seeing here, but what's important is what it looks like on the vessel. Now my pre-felt is going to cover a lot of this vessel. So I only visibly seeing part of this, what's between the pre-felts here. And I'm just putting this down with thin overlapping layers, going all the way to the edges, hanging over a little bit. And it's always more than you think it is when I do this. Transitioning to my next color. Now I could try to fade these a little bit more, but we're just going to let this jump from color to color today. I showed you in the pre-felt video how to sort of make a dual pull where I pulled a little yellow and a little orange or something like that to try to soften the transitions a little bit more. But you know what? I'm going to do a little different here. Let's go to my last color. Now I'm only halfway up with this last color. So I think I'm going to slowly transition right back. I have plans when I start, but you know, I change as I go. Going back to the orange from the red. I know they don't really show that much difference on here. Probably not that much in the video. There are very subtle differences between them here in person too. So I'm going to do a quick transition back here at the top. Here I had like two rows of each. At the top I'm going to go to one row of each. To bring it back to that original green. There's the yellow. angling in as I get closer to the top and I'll go back to my green this lime green now this I want a crisp edge at the top so I'm just I'm reversing my direction of my fiber it's fuzzy in the bottom and crisp at the top to help me get a better edge in the end up there just make sure I'm fully overlapped there all right, a little bit more, felt a little thin. Okay, set my colors off to the side. Get my soapy water out and wet this down. All right, now I'm gonna take my template. Now. This isn't going in now. I'm just using this. Now, you can see, even though I thought I was going to the chalk line, I went over the chalk line, and it goes over quite a bit. But that's okay. We're going to use that to our advantage later. But I am going to put a little water on here so I have a little slippery surface and just start to felt this together a little bit. This will also help me to see where my true edge is now. So when I name, lay my next couple layers down to start working towards the inside of this vessel, I'll know where that edge is better than my chalk line was originally. And I do want a little overlap 
of each layer, and I'll show you that why later. But once I've done this, rubbed it in, make sure it's everything's wet underneath and slightly agitated. I don't want to do too much because I want to have one layer stick to the next. But this is just helping to smooth things out, give us a better work surface. Now when I peel this off, you'll be able to tell where those pre-felts are. Just going to peel this up carefully. Keeping it where it was. All right, make sure I don't flip this over because this is not a, a symmetrical pre um, form. So you can see the shapes of the pre-felts hiding in there. They're on the outside. This is the outside layer with a pre-felt beyond that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a time lapse now of laying out the next two layers on here, and I'll get back to you when I get to the inside. All right, so now that I've got that laid out, there is my resist now with three layers of fiber on the bottom and the first pre-felts on the outside. And now I have those layers built up, slightly rubbed down. And if we look close, and this focuses for me, yep, we have the first layers with the different colors. So here I have an orange on my first layer, then I have the olive green, and then I have this more teal is my inside color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this inside color and just sort of fold it over all the way around. Let's see if I can set that up so you can see that process. All right, I'm going to go around and fold in that second layer. At the bottom, it's orange. I just had a little fun. I like to put a little surprise color at the bottom of my vessels. So just separating this off between the second and third layers. Wrap that around. You may have to add a little moisture along the edges so it sticks. Let me do this. And you want to kind of be very neat and tidy about this part because this is what helps prevent seams on the edges since we're working with a flat resist and we're trying to make a round object if we don't aren't kind of meticulous about this part we'll wind up with thick seams on the edges of the vessel okay now that i have that sort of sitting there dampen that whole thing and then lay in my next layer. Now, as I recall, I was doing these curves at the bottom. 
I'm going to repeat that, keeping it within the edges. Now that's one of the reasons I went over before is so I can go beyond my edges now. I don't have to go beyond the edges because the other side is now wrapped into this. That's the bottom. And then I'll start working my way up. All right, now that I got my first, my inside layer down, I'm gonna wet this down. And then I'm gonna take another piece of the foam template that I have, but a slightly bigger piece than I started with. Well, mostly, doesn't quite cover the whole thing. Dampen that a little bit. Rub this, but I'm gonna feel my edge now and snug it up to the original foam, resist. So, oh, I didn't mention what this foam is. So there's two types of foam you can get. One is a packing material that you can pick up. Uh, it's meant for, you know, packing up dishes and things. So usually when you buy it, it's perforated to break off at every 12 inches or something like that so that you can easily wrap your dishes in it or separate your dishes when when packing up and moving your household this that I'm using here which comes in a large roll is actually made uh, for floor underlayment so you can you know like pergo floors or the uh, engineered snap together wood floors um, this is the underlayment for that the cheap stuff not the brand name stuff but usually the house brand stuff it doesn't need to be the expensive stuff. And it's got the foam, but it also has a plastic layer on it. And this stuff doesn't have those perforation points to break apart when you reuse them over and over again. Okay, now that I've rubbed that in, I am going to go back and then now curl the second layer. Let's see if we can come in here and see this. Taking this olive colored layer and peeling that over that's the between layers layer that goes the opposite direction I'm going to do that so you can see what I just did there separated out the second layer getting my edges really crisp here and I'm going to go around do that on the whole thing and put down my next layer All right, now that I got those first, those inner layers folded in, I'm going to fold in this last layer, snugging it up nice and tight to the form that's inside. Now, that overlapping also helps making sure that you do not get holes on the edges um, of the form when you're making this. You want to snug it tight 
as you're going from one layer to the next but you want to make sure there's some fuzzy overlap to allow you to be able to not have holes on that thin edge you want to make sure it's just as solid as the rest of it all right now also by doing that i can see now you can see i have different colors as they come down i can see what color i put where on one side so i can match it on the other side so we're going to start at the top with the lime green Get my crisp edge up top there as best I can. Let's see. I didn't even do, did I do that? I must have done the yellow. I had to have done the yellow. Okay. So we're just going to put one layer of yellow there, one row of that. And you notice I'm doing the feathering out. The part of my the part away from my hand is the feathery edge and I'm putting that up so it all feathers together so we get a smooth transition. Going to the orange, just one row of that. Feathering over. And this is matching what I did on the other side. Going to the red. And then here I have a couple rows of the red. So that comes down a little further. Again, still feathering it even though it's not visible now, but it will matter. And then we transition back to the orange. I get enough to the edges here. I don't want a whole lot hanging over the edge at this point. Oops. Got some random fibers in there. Get those out. One more round of orange, apparently. Looking at my sides. Now go into the yellow. Now this may seem abrupt, but if it was just, if I was just doing this as a vessel, that'd be one thing. But since I'm putting those pre-felts on here, they're gonna cover up so much of this that I almost want it to be dramatic, quick changes. And again, I'm going to wrap the bottom like I did before, where I come around the corner, following the curve. And that's that. Wet that down. Bring my template back over it, or just my non-template this was this is actually one i started with and decided it was too big and i had too marked up so i cut it down made a new one and that's what's inside here it's more of what's right here on this line i want to keep my height now i'm just giving a really good rubbing here with my fingers into those fibers and using the foam to keep it from moving, but it still allows it to agitate. Massage those fibers and hug those edges. Using this to make sure those edges and follow that template underneath. Now, as much as I tried to not let this top layer go beyond the template and that inside resist, it did it always does and that's okay because by massaging this along the way the way i have it's going to allow me to do a little trick here before we put the uh, other layer of pre-felt on here 
Okay, I'm going to take that off. Now it's felted enough that I can do this and wrap the other side over to here and smooth out those edges. So anything that I had overlapping, hanging off the edge, I'll bring around to this side. Oh, there's some more of that stray fibers from something else. Oh, it's actually the back side of this. That's what that is. Some of the pre-felt extras. So now that I brought that around. And you can see already what that pre-felt is doing on this side. How it just pops out from the base transitional color that we did. So we have this fading color. And we have a different fade going on within that. And this pre-felt also has some other fibers on top that's going to give it some extra depth. So I'm just going to rub this one more time. Make sure everything stays put. Flip it back over, and now we get to add our pre felt on this side. Let's see what we got. A nice big piece for the middle here. That's a bold, I don't think I want that. I'm going to take this. Cut that down into there, and I'll just use this piece here too. So those are my three pieces of pre-felt there. Now, I have done other pieces where the pre-felts went the other direction, and what I would do with those is when I started out, we got stuck. When I started out, I would lay down the first pieces like this on the back side, and then wrap them around. So you would actually wrap around and really distinguish where one side was from the other. So if I actually take this and bring it a little further, well, I'm a little fluffy. I'm gonna actually here, I'm gonna show you. This one got a little thick. I really only care about the front. I'm taking the back of that pre-felt off and thinning it down. That's okay. Sometimes that happens, and sometimes I'm going to let this little bit of the dark green sneak through, and it's going to sneak out along the edges in some spots. I'm going to wet these down directly. There's a lot of water in this piece already, so one of the next steps is just to drain it. After I rub these pre-felts in, and start making them part of the fabric.